Hello everyone, uh, this is probably long overdue, um, but I am going to be doing a tutorial video for my own m Fallout 4 VR Wabajack auto installer thing. I did this once for the Skyrim one, but I haven't actually done one for Fallout 4 VR yet, so here you go. It's very foggy today, so it's not that pretty. <laughs> But it's got a full graphical overhaul. It should run smooth at 90 FPS. It's probably not doing that right now because I'm recording at 1080p. Um, but it, it usually does run pretty smooth. It's got idle hands, so you have um, physical Pip-Boy interaction. Wow, so crazy. <laughs> um, got a colorful map. You can zoom out. Um, you've got physical stem pack stuff. Um, you can look at your affinity stuff. There's a lot of mods here. I think I have like over 200. Um, it's meant to be optimized. Um, there's custom weapons. Bats is changed so you can't like target stuff. It's also faster. You can get hurt more. Um, there's people that will come and hunt you. It's survival focused. Um, yeah, there's really too many things to name, but uh, right now I'm gonna go to my desktop view and show you how to install this um, and then we'll come back into VR and uh, I'll show you how to like configure different stuff but it's pretty great so if you wanted to get into Fallout 4 VR this is a very easy way to, to do it so yep um, so I'm on my desktop I'm gonna show you how to install this now using the uh, Wabajack thing so the first thing you want to do is come to my readme. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Uh, but then you want to scroll down. You don't want to read this. Um, if you haven't, you need the DLCs for this. Uh, and I'll, I'll go over how to do that. Um, anyways, first thing you want to do is grab this. And you want to get the exe. So you just... Uh, wait for that to download. Mine is already downloaded, uh, so I'm not gonna. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not gonna wait for this. So I'll just um, get rid of that. But as soon as that does download, just double click on it. And then install it uh, to a folder. So I have mine on a separate hard drive right here. Um, and it'll just install all the, all the things you need. So. Double click on that. Um, and then it's going to start uh, downloading the new files that you need. Mine is updating at the moment. So just wait for that. Do, do, do. Um, while that's downloading, <clears throat> uh, you can set up your, your system. So if you haven't already, okay, cool. We're just going to minimize that for right now. Um, if you haven't already, start the game once. Um, actually, first clear out any previous uh, install of Fallout 4. So if you've previously used Fallout 4 VR. Um, let me go to it right now. <clears throat> and you are using like Vortex or uh, Nexus Mod Manager or manually installing stuff. Just completely wipe all of this. Drag it to your trash. Um, and then you want to... I'll wait for Steam to come up, but you want to uh, uninstall Fallout 4. So just uninstall this and then reinstall it and then it'll uh, get like a fresh version of Fallout 4 VR for you. <clears throat> or back it up if you plan on going back to your uh, previous version. Alright, you're all good. Um, you, we can, you can do this after or before, but you can also go into... Um, your properties and you can uncheck that uh, that should make it more stable in the game uh, if you don't have the steam overlay on and also yeah disable full screen optimization so to do that go back into your Fallout 4 VR folder which it's gonna be depending on wherever you have it installed I have mine on a separate hard drive um, actually you shouldn't, so normally if you have like one hard drive, I will open that up right now. I have too many folders open. Um, so I'm 
I'm just kidding. So normally if you have a, if you have like one hard drive, local hard drive, um, it's going to be under program files, Steam, Steam apps, common. Uh, it's going to be Fallout 4 VR. Now you don't want this. <clears throat> if you have it, if you have your Fallout 4 VR under this, it's going to cause problems. So it's, it'd be better if you have like a separate hard drive to do this, but you can do it on a single hard drive, which I have personally never done, but it's possible. Uh, it's right here. So just click on that link and then follow the instructions here to make a separate <coughs> uh, Steam folder for Fallout 4. But if you do have another hard drive, just I would just install it on that. Um, and then you can just... Uh, I have mine as like Steam games and then you can just install it in the folder. So anyways, to disable full screen optimizations, come over to this. Uh, your folder is not going to look like this. Don't worry about that right now. Click on properties, compatibility, and I actually haven't done it for mine, but I'll do it right now. So yeah, you want to um, actually, no, that's right. You want to, you want to have that on. So check that on. All right, cool. So, moving right along. Then you want to start up Fallout 4 at least once. That's gonna make all the um, <clears throat> all the right folders and settings for you. So just turn on Steam VR, start it up, and you can change some of these settings if you want. So definitely put it on survival. Uh, comfort sneak off for the immersion. You can leave it on if you want. Um, if you don't want to like bend down physically, and then you can change your locomotion settings to whatever you want. I like smooth locomotion, um, and then just follow the instructions for uh, the graphical settings and TA. Uh, now you can change this a little bit after you set up the mod list, um, but this is the settings that I found um, makes the game aesthetically pleasing and keeps performance pretty high. Alright, so DLCs. So you need to have regular Fallout 4 installed, and you also need to own all of the DLCs. Um, so if you don't have all the DLCs, you can either buy it on Steam or you can find it on sale. Uh, but yeah, you, you need the Game of the Year edition, so you need all of these. <clears throat> now, after you um, after you install it, you want to go to it. Let me minimize this. Uh, we're gonna go to where I Fallout 4 installed, which is also in the same hard drive. Doesn't have to be. You can just install this in your program files if you want. Um, you want to go to it, and you want to go to data. All right, and then you want to open another window. And you want to go to your Fallout 4 VR uh, folder. right here open up the data okay and then um, I already have mine set up but basically let me do this so it's a little bit bigger um, you want to grab everything that has DLC so that do not grab the workshop stuff that will mess up your game so ignore the workshop content grab all of this I'm not actually going to drag it over, but you just drag it over into your Fallout 4 VR data folder, and you're good. Um, my mod list already has the DLC fixes stuff in it, so you should be able to play through it. Um, and you're all set. You have the DLCs now. So, pretty easy. Alright, now you're ready to install Wabajack. So, you can open this up again. Browse mod lists. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you're going to come down and find this and you're going to click on download. All right, that will automatically open up the README, which I already had opened up previously, so we can close that. All right, cool. If you want to see any of the mods in this, you can open up the manifest. That will give you a huge long list. You can search for whatever you want. Um, and this is everything that is in this uh, list, along with a link to 
directly to Nexus if you are curious. So you can close that right now. Um, all right, don't change this, but install location. So you, I didn't go over this, but you do want to make a folder in the same hard drive that you have the game on. So for this video, I made a folder called Babadak Fallout 4 VR Central's tutorial. That's going to be the install location. Now it will automatically put the download folder inside of that folder. Um, this mod list needs, I can't do math off the top of my head, but I want to say like um, 35 gigabytes, 30, 38 gigabytes roughly um, of space just for the mod list. Fallout 4 VR takes around 20, 30 gigs. So in total, I want to say like at least 70 gigs of space if you plan on using the game and the download folder and everything. Now you can change the download folder. So let's say you want to put this on a different hard drive. You can do that. Um, I would just make like, let's say I have a, a an old SATA two terabyte hard drive, which I got pretty cheap. Um, so you just make another folder and call it like Fallout VR controls download folder um, on a different hard drive and then you can change that to that folder so I can find it cool um, and that way it'll be split up and then you know you can have less space so all right we all good you did that you made sure you started the game um, now you're ready to install your awesome mod list that I made so you can click on play <coughs> and you'll get a nice slideshow of all the mods you can go through them um, and it's like hashing out everything just to make sure it's good and cool it's starting to install everything now the reason this is going so fast is because I have Nexus premium so while that's installing I will go over that so at the very top of the screen it's not needed the problem without doing that is you see how fast this is going it won't do that you're gonna have to click on every individual link and there's also a um, actually I want to stop this because um, I already have mine installed and pointless for me to do that um cool but you do need nexus premium so uh let me go to the nexus it's loading right now um and i have to just open up the mod pack right now hopefully that didn't use okay didn't use my um api uh that i need that later but um, <clears throat> all right, uh, Google Nexus Premium. Okay, so you do not need lifetime. I have lifetime because I mod a lot. If you're just planning to use this, like if you, if you just want to download this list, you can just get one month um, and you can cancel it. Um, you want to sign in with your Nexus account the reason you want to do this is, like I said, it'll make it go very fast. Um, it's the difference of like like a one hour install versus doing this all day and having to click through every single individual link. Which can get real annoying. Alright, so we have that installed. Um, Cool. You're gonna see install <laughs> installation complete after you know it creates everything, um, and then you want to log in. So I go over this in the readme. But this is what it's gonna look like when you open it up. You can click on this, and then you want to connect to Nexus, enter your Nexus account and password, and click yes if it asks you if you want to link the uh, <clears throat> the API stuff. And you're good. Then you can like download and install mods and use this for other games if you want. Um, sweet. So, moving along on my readme. Right, copying over the game folders. Ugh, game folder stuff. Um, so as soon as you open it up, it's gonna look like this. Well, it actually won't look like this. I made a new profile, but it's gonna be on hardcore. Um, doesn't matter which one you choose. I'll go for that in a little bit. Uh, but you want to 
click on this button right here and then do open profile folder or you can do open game folder but it doesn't really matter um and you don't have to do it this way you can also just go to wherever you installed it so it should be in that folder but mine is right here um then you want to find game folder files now if you don't have an index you're gonna grab this and you're gonna do copy or you can drag this over as well go back to wherever you installed fallout 4 vr right here and drag this over um and you're good if you don't have if you're not using the index controllers if you are using the index controllers um you definitely want to open this up i go over the controller layouts these are my own bindings that i made um, because I use the index and you want to copy this and drag it over into here and then click on overwrites. After you do that, um, we're going to do a couple of things in here, but once you start up Steam VR again, you want to, um, go into, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not using VR right now, so hopefully this will work. Maybe it won't. I'm going to guess it won't because I don't have my, um, Headset on, I might just say like air. Uh, maybe it does. Okay, yeah. So once you have SteamVR on, you can either do this by like clicking the um, menu button in the game and going to controller bindings, or the easier way to do it is do devices, controller settings. Oh, damn, I can't. It's not gonna work, but you're gonna see like choose controller bindings right here, and you're gonna do custom, find Fallout 4 VR, and then you're gonna try and find my bindings, which should be called this fallout vr central bindings and you're going to select use this and that way um it should work pretty good i have the layout right here you can definitely edit it if, if you want but this is this is what i found to be the best um layout for index so let me close that down okay um all right we did that Right, choosing your profile. So, I've got two profiles here. Uh, my personal favorite is the hardcore one that gets rid of the HUD completely. Um, so, which means you have to use your Pip-Boy for quests. Um, you know, kind of like real life, you're not gonna have a giant HUD in your face. Uh, there's no compass, no sneak HUD. It's very immersive. Um, also, VATS is turned into bullet time, so you're not gonna have normal VATS. You have to actually aim. Uh, now, the aiming is accurate, so you're not going to get weird accuracy mechanics with my list. Um, wherever you aim and fire, it, it's going to go there. Um, it's not completely overpowered, so modded weapons should actually help with accuracy a little bit more than unmodded weapons. Um, <clears throat> I'm using, there was more accurate weapons, but I'm using an updated version of that. And you can also get damaged more in VATS, so VATS is now faster. It's um, in the normal VATS, it freezes almost completely. It doesn't do that in this. It's the same speed as Jet. Um, and this is my preferred method of playing. But if that is too hardcore for you, there's less hardcore. Um, pretty similar. It's still going to be difficult. But uh, VATS has changed back to normal. You still get crit outside of VATS. Um, and you've got all the HUD stuff on. Now, some people have asked this. If you want to change any of this. So let's say you like... Um, you like the VATS bullet time mechanics, but you still want some HUD elements. Um, first, what I would always recommend doing in case, like if you plan on changing anything with this list is, and you have a new mod organizer, um, here you go, this mod organizer, it's, it's pretty easy. This is your plugins list, these are your mods. Um, if you ever download something from Nexus, it'll show up in here. You double click on this, it's gonna show up in here, and then you can check it on. Um, Um, you can click it on and it's gonna show up right here and you can organize stuff and I already have like loot and everything um, Okay But as I was saying if you wanted to change anything with this list First definitely make a copy That way you can always go back to it in case you um, screw anything up So let's say you wanted the vast mechanics do you copy and do like my main game or whatever um and this would be the one that you're actually going to play on and, you know, customize. Um, and that way, 
if you like start messing with anything here and it like gets screwed up or you crash or something, you have a clean profile which should work 100%. So we've got my main game. You want to open profile folder and then you're going to come into this one. Um, now if you plan on doing a lot of INI changes, there is a tool which you can use called um, download this manually <coughs> and then you just point it towards your profile and you can start messing with iron eye stuff and then it'll go back to normal if you want it but you can just do this manually for your only couple things so it's um it's this one right so it's going to be under vrui uh these are the two things you want to change so this is for the compass so the default is one i think that is huge even on the the uh less HUD thing, I changed that a little bit, so I'd recommend you put up that at 0.5 if you want to HUD, that way it's not going to be like super in your face. And then the info scale, I'd also put that at 0.5, but you can set it to whatever size you want. You can also, there's ways to like edit the position of it, but um, if you plan on having the HUD, I would just keep it at normal. You can look online and see if you can change that around if you really want, but there you go, that's how you get your HUD and it'll keep the VATS. Um, and you want to do save. Actually, this might be set on README, so if you want to change that, just um, properties and check read only. And you can do save. And uh, you've got your head back with the VAT stuff. All right, it's a long video. Um, all right, changing things with idle hands. So idle hands is like the most one of the most important mods in this list. It gives you hands in Fallout, and it also adds extra stuff like uh, physical stem pack stuff. So I have mine set to me, which is female, Caucasian, white, but you can change that depending on your character that you're playing as. So you want to find idle hands. Um, again, make a new profile in case you screw this up, but all you want to do, don't uncheck it. Don't, don't do that. Uh, you right click on it and you do reinstall mod and it's gonna pop up with this so click on DLC and then you can choose whatever gender you want to play as and then choose your skin color I'll just you know change it to that for and then you can choose your uh, glove type so you know depending on what you want. I personally think that this one looks the best for me, but I don't know, Kellogg is pretty cool too. The leather gloves are cool. I don't really like Raider gloves, but you know, if you like them, go for it. We cut that gloves. Um, and then, cool. That You don't need to worry about that. Um, and then you click install and you want to do replace. Now I'm not going to click replace because I like the way mine are set up, but you definitely want to click replace. Do not click rename, do not click merge. Just do that. And it, it'll just reinstall the mod and be exactly in the same uh, place that it was before. Okay. What is next? I need to update this readme. There is no no more in the new version. Um, actually, let me, just, let me just take that out right now because that's not needed. So I'm not signed in. I'm going to do that later. There is, it's not going to ask you for your HUD anymore. You do that in the game. Um, alright, so cool, you can boot into the game, which I will show you in a second, but to boot in, you have to, um, whenever you start the game, you have to um, make sure it's on this, so do not start the game from Steam, you're not going to get the modded setup, always do this. Um, and you should be all set, so you can just click run. But obviously, it's not gonna work right now because I'm not, I'm not in my headset. But it's gonna uh, say mod organizer is frozen, and then it's gonna come up with that. And it might be black for like a second, um, but then you should be in the modded game. So let me go in the game, and I'll uh, show you what you have to do when you first start. So there was um, 
one more thing I wanted to go over before I jump into VR and show you some of the configuration stuff. Um, and that is how to adjust some of the uh, Fallout Script Extender mods. So first one you might want to adjust is Unlimited Survival. Um, to adjust any of these, you find it in the list and you right click, then you do Open in Explorer. Um, and you can go here, that is not the right one, my bad. Go to MCM. And you can open up is it this one, it is not that one, it is the settings. Um, so on default, fast travels off, um, survival saving is on. I would definitely recommend you do not change this. You want to keep manual saving on because if you use auto saves or quick saves, your game is probably going to die. Auto saves are terrible in any Bethesda game. So just don't use that. Uh, achievements should be on by default. Um, you can take the location comments off, but let's say you want fast travel on, you can just like change that to one and you can uh, exit this and save. Um, now I'm not sure if you have to adjust both of these, but I have been doing that every time I, I do this. So I also adjust the MCM setting and I also change that to one if I, if I want like fast travel on uh, and survival mode on as well. So that's the first one. The other one is smooth movement. Uh, what smooth movement does is show you right now um this is a vr mod by shizoff who is a great mod creator he's made some really awesome stuff he made like weapon throw vr for skyrim um and it fixes some of the juttering i'll let that go to um yeah so you can see it's more smooth uh, I have adjusted it to my preferences, but if you want to change this, um, you want to go to FOSE, again, do right click, open it in Explorer, and then you can come here, and you can start playing with this. You're going to have to adjust this to whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, like if you want the smoothing amount to be higher, you can raise that up. Dampening, you can change that. Um, you know, so if you want the dampening to be higher, you can do like, I think the default for this was at one, I believe. I don't remember the default values. I lowered it because I found the, the default was, um, it was really smooth, but there was a big delay when trying to go back to normal, um, like the normal height. Um, so you can just play around with this. You're going to have to test it out in the game, see what works for you. The height should be set automatically, so you're not... It's not going to feel like you're um, as high on the ground. I think I might have put this a little bit lower. I think it might have been 10 on the default, but I changed it to 8 because I felt it was a little bit too high above the ground. Um, yeah, so that's how you can adjust this. I'm not going to change that, but um, if you're having trouble with like judder when you're walking around, try adjusting smooth movement. So. Cool. Let me hop into VR now and uh, show you some of the settings. So here we are in the game. Um, this is what it should look like after it finally loads up. Uh, so we can click on new. And we'll wait for that to load. Do, 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 do. Alright, uh, here's the intro. I'm gonna skip it because um, I've seen this a thousand times, so we're just gonna skip that. And you will end up like this. Now it may look weird. Um, you're gonna. I'm gonna just lower myself right now. Uh, War never changes. Okay, here's your guy. You're in the sink. Thank it's very weird. Absolutely. Now get ready and stop talking to Mira. Right. Alright, so. Now you can make your character. Um, well, choose your character because uh, Fallout 4 VR does not really let you customize anything. We'll just keep him like normal. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and uh, it's to change your. I'm using index controller, so it's trigger to change your sex. And then you can go through, be whatever you want. Um, we'll just 
see that normal. Now to exit it, it's hard to see, um, but on index at least, you press the A button, and then you can click trigger. Okay, so I'm on the hardcore profile. If you are not using that, you're using the uh, less hardcore, you're going to see a bunch of notifications popping up here saying the mods are loading. Um, but I have no HUD for the immersion, right, Ned? <laughs> All right, so it's loading right now. I'm just gonna wait like um, 30 seconds or so. Let's hear, you can talk Hun. to him. I'm hurrying up, don't worry. He's hurrying up. Okay, I think it's been long enough. Um, so if you're on less hardcore, just wait until all of that um, loads. If you're on this profile, you just have to kind of time it out and just wait like a minute or so and then you want to make a save and then you're gonna reload that save all right and that way all the mods um are like fully initialized now so okay we're gonna make our way to the room so uh with this list i'm using the unofficial fallout 4 patch which means you are not going to be able to start the normal fallout 4 intro um it's broken, the unofficial patch fixes a lot of stuff, but it breaks that quest. Um, so you, you have to use start me up, and I got rid of the other options. So you can only start outside of the vaults. So click through there, you can choose your um, special stats. Always do idiots, <laughs> savant, it's the best perk in Fallout, but anyways, that's just what I usually do. Name your person. Alright. Um, and then on, on index, it's grip to exit that. If you're an Oculus or Windows Mixed Reality, you're going to have to figure that out yourself. I, I don't know. I don't know the controls. I've never owned those headsets. You can choose your traits. So if you haven't used this mod before, um, it's pretty cool. You can have like special traits that some of them are kind of overpowered like with VR you're not gonna be able to stagger so this just gives you um more melee damage if you want to do that but okay whatever um what are you doing with your life so you can do whatever you want for this if you want the uh, quote unquote vanilla experience because um you like want to start really from the beginning of the game choose vault enthusiast uh, and then, where were you? You were near Vault 111. What do you have with you? Um, for the vanilla experience, you can do that, but um, I would just do only the essentials. Um, you don't have to do this stuff, so like you do whatever you want. You know, you can be, you can start wherever you want in the Commonwealth. Um, how much do you know? Level one. You can go all the way up here. Be random level if you want, but we'll just do starting up. And uh, enough, we're ready to wake up. So, just wait. All right, um, when you start the game, it's gonna be a random weather. So some people ask about this, that it looks like Silent Hills. Um, I have vivid fallout and true storms uh, both in this list. So it's completely randomized and the time and the, uh, the weather. So, okay, we're gonna put this away. Um, here's your pit boy. So first, let me make a save, always make a save. We'll grab the water, grab that. Um, all right, so you're gonna wanna customize some stuff. This is how you turn the pit boy on. Um, you have to physically go over and touch it. Uh, you can favorite stuff here, but if you're having trouble with the activation, there are some things you can do. Um, I'll go over some of these holotype stuff here in a second. Um, but idle hands is this. So it gives you hands, it does the physical pit boy stuff. Also, you might notice my frame rate is um, slightly, like it's not running at 90 right now, and that's because I'm recording at 1080p. If I wasn't recording, this should be very smooth. Um, it should run pretty good, even with all this fog. Um, but we'll do that. So, I will go over adding uh, custom slots in a, a little bit, but 
Um, first, if you can set it at the default position. And then if you're having trouble activating it, it seems fine to me, but you can do one click away from the screen, one click away from the screen, and uh, you can close that. And then, um, you can kind of play with this and see I actually like that the default more. Um, I'm gonna set that back. It seems fine to me. Uh, but this is how you can adjust the activation um, spear. You know, if you're having trouble like clicking it. Now you have to actually look at the pit boy. So if I don't, well, it worked that time. But um, if you don't look at it, it might not work. But cool. That is how you activate your pit boy. Um, some of the holotapes are at the chem bench. Um, for power armor. I need to add this to the readme. Um, and up. So, P A F S A S module. Um, what that does is you can either enable it or disable it. It's disabled by default. You can enable it, and that adds the um, power armor animation that was in the regular game to the VR version. Um, so you can like open it and you'll see the power armor like open up. If you don't have that off, um, you'll just instantly go in power armor. Yeah, activate that again. Combat stalkers is uh, enabled by default. You can um, adjust anything you want here. Um, default settings, we'll just enable that. This, uh, you can lower the damage. What this is, is this is gonna add people that will hunt you down randomly and you can either run away or you can kill them then they're very hard so um sweets uh let me go to the vaults oh also um you can adjust the music there shouldn't be any combat music but um i have radio silence let's say if you want like just to hear the uh sounds and not get the um music you can do that and uh, this, I don't have a gun, do I? I think, Let's make sure it's on survival. Yeah, I'm on survival. So I just don't have any, um, I do it again. All right, uh, this is how you get your info. So you'll see like, if you're tired, hungry, you can also look in your pit boy. Um, and then you'll also see your AP and your health here too. So it's out of your face and it's still immersive. <laughs> and uh, that is on the index, it's gonna be B. And you can see it, there's no auto targeting. Um, you can still teleport with that. All right, now if you wanna follow the normal um, quest line, you can ignore that, that's for a uh, custom weapon. You want to do this first. Um, actually, no matter where you are in the world, you want to do this. Um, you need to go to the vault. Uh, that's Speed Hunters. You can just click through that. And then... Um, come in here. I don't want to spoil it too much. But uh, basically, you need to go inside the vault. You have to find... Uh, the vault dweller's body. Second. La di da di da. All right. Wait for that to open up. Um, then you turn on your light, loud as fuck. <laughs> uh, you might notice it's dark, um, that is to fix the performance, so. It's gonna be dark here, Corvaga plants, and also the Institute, and that's because those places run like absolute trash, no matter what you do, so I, um, I have taken off the lights just for these areas. Um, to fix the performance. It actually works pretty well in the vault. Um, in the Institute, it's kind of weird, but the performance makes it worth it. Okay. 
Um, you can turn on. I have a. Uh, you can adjust these if you want. I think I have floating quest markers off, but um, you can turn them on if you want. Uh, the problem is it. I don't really like that. <laughs> Looks kind of weird. Um, but if you need help finding a quest marker, you can go over there. Quickly run over here, kill these. Alright. Hello. Um, you wanna grab the audio log? And you wanna listen to that, so. Just listen. Oh, hello. Where are you? Audio log. Okay. Listen to that, and um, I think at that point, and then you report the kidnapping to um, I think either uh, Codsworth or Nick Valentine. Um, just remember, always do this. Otherwise, basically every other quest in the game, including the presence of, will be screwed up. So you you have to come here and do that. You can just leave the vault. Um, Alright, and I'm just gonna show you. Um, all these creatures. Uh, I'm just gonna show you some of the holotapes with True Storm, so. Uh, let me go do that. Okay, so here I am at the uh, chem bench. Um, I also gotta show you the idle hand stuff too. Um, but, you can get some of the other. Um, stuff in this mod pack here so you can make throwing weapons which are kind of fun actually i'll make i'll make a fidget spinner throwing thing i don't know that'd be kind of cool um and all right so you can change the weather with this if you want i would just leave it then i would make the true storms configuration thing and um ignore all of these uh, if you're on the hardcore mode, um, one thing that might be useful to get is affinity list. Um, you can also do that too. And you might want that too, the vivid others thing. Um, turn that on again. So we'll go over to the tree storms configuration totally optional you can but i'd recommend you turn this on yeah you want that on um if you want like more difficulty you can turn that on and um i usually set mine to like 10 percent that'll make it so if there's ever a tree storms uh rad rainstorm or whatever uh there's a chance that you'll have a ghoul horde come and attack you uh for the more hardcore people <laughs> if they like that I think I'm getting attacked. Um, I'm gonna let dog me deal with that. Um, what am I missing? Uh, vivid brothers. Oh yeah, the e throwing weapons. So these are kind of fun. I use it with the grenade button. Um, so you can arm it. Now, it's kind of weird the way you throw it. Um, if you, like, throw it normally, it's going to go straight up. <laughs> just, that's just the way it works because it was made for uh, the flapper. And so you kind of have to, like, aim it weirdly. And it sort of works. Yeah, you can, like, kind of... That's very... Well, it's probably just easier to shoot them in the head. But <laughs> um, You can get good at it. It takes, it takes practice. But I've managed to use them. It's just like kind of weird the way you aim it. Um, it's not like completely centered. That worked that time, so. Yeah. And it doesn't slow down. Um, but you can get good with throwing weapons if you, if you want. Um, and custom weapons. So let me spawn some custom weapons and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Alright, I, uh, I did spawn myself a custom weapon. Also, FYI, if you ever want to favor anything, um, on index at least, you press the grip button on your uh, left controller, and then you go down to favorite, 
and to select stuff, um, you can either press the trackpad, but I changed it to joystick click on my right, so you can do favorite, and then you can put it wherever you want, and just click it again. But we will select um, that. Oh, also to select anything in the Pip Boy, it's either a trackpad on this controller or joy or joystick click on this one. So either one works. But we'll do that. This one actually surprisingly works fine. Um, some of the modded weapons, I mean, it's a little bit off, but that doesn't, that's not that bad. All I can show you how to adjust it regardless. If you ever run into like some of the custom weapons here, not looking correctly. So you click on idle hands and we are going to do this one, adjust uh, weapon slots. All right. And then you exit that. And this is how you dust it, so you can move it um, down, and then, you know, let's say that's, like, you want to try and get it on your hand, so. We'll probably move it up again, or we'll move it down, and that's, it actually did get messed up this time, so. We'll move it down some more, you can look at it, um, down, down. Maybe like forward, back a little bit. Okay, and then we'll move it down, and uh, maybe down one more time. Okay, that that seems fine, and <laughs> then you can inspect it and uh, it again, and accept and save. All right. Okay, and uh, there you go. That's how you can adjust modded weapons. It's probably a little bit off, but I don't know. It's close enough. Um, and get the grenade. I think that should be fine too. Um, okay, well, yeah, you get the idea. Um, all right, oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, I think that was really everything I needed to go over for getting this to work. It's pretty great. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Especially, like, right now you can see the, um... Oh, I haven't changed my position, so... Oh, that's a little bit wonky. Uh, you can adjust that with idle hands. Oh, yeah, also, if you're ever hurt... I'm here right now. So, you have a stem pack that you can reach behind your back and grab um, with idle hands, and then you put it in there. So it'll drop to the ground for more immersion when you're uh, playing the game. It's a cool way to heal yourself. Um, yeah. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this mod list. Um, you can reach out to me on the Wavadoc Discord or... Um, my own discord but that's mostly used for my twitch and youtube channel um yeah anyways hope you guys have fun